Hello everyone, my name is Edith, also known as the Lady E, and welcome to the Lady E Effect podcast. For those that have taken the time to watch any of our previous episodes, we just want to thank you for your support, thank you for taking the time to watch this, and thank you to all of our previous guests that have just blessed our platform with your wisdom and knowledge and information that you've shared with the people. So um, welcome officially to season three. We are super, super excited uh, to have all those that will be listening to this on our audio platforms as well as our visual platform. And thanks to YouTube. And for those that have not subscribed yet, please do so. Um, today, we are really, really excited to have our guest, um, for those that don't know, this man has actually done a lot of amazing things, and we're actually going to get in that get into that today. So I'm going to give you the time to introduce yourself and let us know who you are. My name is Douglas Eze, and um, I'm a financial planner out of Maryland. <laughs> I've been there. I've been here for about going over what's that? 25 years mm. so yeah so you know just in the finance space and also an entrepreneur and also a published author as well mm, that is nice well welcome to our platform thank you so much for your time and being here um got a lot of great things to talk about so i want to go ahead and piggyback off of a couple of things that you discussed um your entrepreneur like myself, um, we love introducing and interviewing entrepreneurs. Um, it is not an easy space to be in, but it truly is a blessing. There's a lot of um, contributions and impactful things that you can do to the community. So I would like to touch bases on that first. So in regards to your experience with entrepreneurship, if you could share with the audience, um, what led you into entrepreneurship? What was that area that really got you into really looking into it and getting fully engaged in the entrepreneurial space? Yeah, definitely. So when I first came into America, I was waiting table at IHOP when somebody introduced me to the financial service business. I wasn't, I didn't know I was getting into entrepreneurship. Actually, I just was looking for something better than working at IHOP. And it so happened that in the insurance financial services industry, you know, you are truly a self-employed individual. So by being self-employed, I guess that drew me into, that's basically me being an entrepreneur. But as I continue to grow in the business and continue to work with, you know, different mentors as well uh, in this industry. And then when the money started coming in, then I said, okay, now we got to invest some money in some other businesses and all that other stuff. So that's basically the journey. But um, it wasn't easy, of course, you know, because so many people want to be entrepreneurial. You know, you just got to be, be ready to put in the work because entrepreneurship means you're unemployed when you first get started, you know, and you're going to be everything for your business. You're going to be the president, you're going to be the vice president, you're going to be the secretary, everything. <laughs> you're going to do all the work mm -hmm. until the money starts coming in. And then you start delegating the job. And I say, you know, you, the first thing you want to do is give up the job that is like the $10 an hour job that you were doing. Find somebody and pay that person that so that that could free you up to do the things that you want to do you know, in your business so you can continue to scale that business up. Mm. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, I wanted to touch bases on what you just shared. You're right. <laughs> when you start entrepreneurship, you know, being an, uh, an employee is, of course, very different. You have a specific job title. You might have a couple of things that you need to do within it. But when you really start entrepreneurship, um you're everything <laughs> so um it is absolutely not an easy task at all but like you said you know understanding um the role that you play and 
you know, it's just the beginning. There's going to be a transitional process for sure. Um, and understanding the value of your time. Like, do you want to work where you get paid $10 an hour or do you want to learn and grow so you can be able to get your time back and invest in paying someone something that mm -hmm. you're no longer in a space of doing because of course you're uh, working your way up and expanding your time so it's more free. Um, but yeah, that that's very, very true. And I appreciate you sharing that because there's a lot of people that talk about business um, and entrepreneurship. And there may be companies or individuals that maybe could start with employees, but that's not everybody's journey. But usually when it comes to entrepreneurship, you do start by yourself. And I think in today's world, we don't really highlight that as much. And it's important to know, like you said, hard work, um, you know, you can't fake it. You really need to put in the work, you know, um, that's where the foundation can really start to build. And uh, before you know it, there's a building, you know, an architecture that takes place. So um, we appreciate you sharing that. I also wanted to really touch bases as well as you being in the financial space. Um, when people listen to or hear the word finance, um, a lot of things I'm sure comes to mind, money, you know, jobs, business, but I don't think most people, I don't want to say the average person, but I don't think most people really understand finance and financial literacy. So in terms of the industry that you're in and what you have been practicing and learning and growing over time, um, if you don't mind, I'm just going a little bit deeper into your space and share some tips that I believe myself, as well as, you know, the audience can be able to benefit in regards to the financial industry. Yeah, no, cool. Thank you for asking that question. So when it comes to finance, you know, I didn't grow up um, learning about that when I went to school or anything. I just didn't know anything about money, just knew how to spend my parents' money, right? But then as I got into this industry, and I started learning about insurance. And then I went ahead and got my securities license to be able to offer investments. But I always had a question. You know, I, the question was always, how is it that there's some people, they're older, they're driving this brand new Cadillac, these new cars, they're going on cruises. Now, what are they doing differently? And then I see some other older people that are working at Walmart, McDonald's, so one day I sat down, I, I went to Walmart, actually, and I talked to this gentleman, you know, older guy who was in his 70s. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew he wasn't working there because he loves the uniform, you know, because I'm, I'm 70 years old. I don't want to be working on a Walmart, mm -hmm. you know. So I asked him a question. I said, you know, maybe at first I said, can I take you out to lunch? And let's, you know, of course, people like you to pay for stuff, right? So he said, yeah, sure. So we went to lunch. And, you know, and I asked, I started asking him questions. What happened? How come he works at Walmart? Does he like the job or whatever? And he was point blank honest with me. And he said, you know, I had a great job. I was doing very well, but I ran out of money. You know, I retired at 65. My social security is not enough. And I don't have a pension because the job he was working at when he did work, um, they, didn't have, they didn't offer a pension plan. They offered a 401k. But when he started withdrawing the money and the taxes started hitting it and um, he ran out of money in four or five years. Mm. So he had to go back to work. And I'm like, wow, interesting. And then at that point, I said to myself, you know, this is the same 401k that I set up for people, you know, the market and all this stuff. And I said, you know, I'm sure there's something better. And then as I continued in that journey, that thought process, you know, I started Asking another question to myself, I said, wait a minute, how come the wealthy in America are able to sustain their wealth from one generation to the next, especially all these business owners? And now I'm also a business owner. So I'm like, but well, nobody has no blueprint. No one is showing me how to keep this money in the family forever. If I want to leave money to kids, back then I, I, I didn't have you know, any children or married then. So I said, how do they do it? So I said, you know what? I'm, let me just stop listening to what the manager in my office was talking about. Let me stop listening to all these people 
and let me research wealthy people. And I started researching wealthy families and I started seeing the common story that all of them have, you know, things like a trust is set up and they talk about insurance. So I said, okay, this is something that nobody is teaching. So I don't, you know, dig more into it, start listening, just going online searching. And I ran into my first mentor that actually was an attorney. You know, I, I went to his website. The website said tax secrets of the wealthy. So I started, I went through that whole thing. Then I purchased his book and it cost me $4,000. Mm. This was like 19 years ago, four grand. Mm. And the guy called me later and he said, you know, why did you buy my book? Why did you pay $4,000 for it? Because he, he already been on my website because um, on, when I ordered the book, he asked me questions in there. So I wrote down some things and he called, you know, looked me up and everything, looked at my website, everything, came back and said, why did you order my book? Because you actually wanted to send me my, refund me back my money. And because he was using his book as a, you know, draw to get wealthy people. Mm. Because again, when you think about wealthy people are always the ones looking for tax secrets. So it made sense. And he put his price tag on his book for four grand. And we talked for about a good two hours. They gave me an audience for two hours. And at the end, he said, you know what? I'll say, I, I'm going to go ahead and send it to you. And once you get it, you know, it's going to change your business life. It's going to change how you deal with clients. And he just, he, you know, um, I did receive his book, read it the first time. And I went and I set up my first trust with an attorney. And, you know, and once I set that up, I also purchased insurance. Because back then I was selling a lot more securities. So I, I wasn't a big believer of insurance, even though I was doing, but I didn't understand it. But he was the first person that said, you know, you need to really learn more about it, about life insurance. And he said, that's something you're using a penny to buy a dollar. Hmm. He said, if I was selling you a penny, if I was selling you a dollar for a penny, how much, how many will you buy? I said, a whole lot of it. And he said, guess what? And it's tax free. Hmm. So that made sense. So as I started researching, I wrote my first book called Creating Generational Wealth, what the super wealthy know that you need to know. You know, so that that was a big game changer for me when I got that book and I, when I wrote the book and everything. And um, understanding what cash value is and then understanding finances, I started realizing, you know what? One thing that I'm going to start doing is help my clients find money in places that they're throwing money away unknowingly. Unknowingly because they don't know they're doing it and unnecessarily who could fix it. Because one thing I found out quickly was money is like water. You know, so if you have water in a cup, that water doesn't want to sit there. The water wants to do something. It needs to be moving. It needs to be drank. It needs to be doing something. If you ignore it, it's going to start evaporating. So once I start understanding, and then if there's holes in the cup, the water is going to drain out pretty fast. Mm. Well, related to money, money does the same thing. Either you're spending money or you're saving money. And the biggest thing that most people forget is there's a big difference between saving money and investing money. You know, so a lot of people are focused on, I need to save more, I need to invest more. And when you're talking to a financial advisor, you know, so-called financial advisors, when you're talking to them, the first thing they want to do is ask you, you know, hey, Edith, how much money you got? Bring it. Let me help you invest it. I could help you buy this stock, you know, that's earning eight to average eight percent interest rate. But me being in that industry in the past, realized first of all, average is not money. Mm -hmm. Average is just math. It's not guaranteed. The market is speculating. So that changed my whole business life. And I just, you know, it took me to a different level when it comes to educating finance to clients because I realized that also so many people make money. There's a lot of folks getting paid. There's a lot of immigrants. 
that come from West Africa come here and they're getting money. They're working hard. They start a business. But the question is, who are you working for? It's not for your family because a lot of immigrants don't want to talk about debt. You know, they don't talk about finances to their children. People, husband and wife hide money, you know, from each other. And then when they die, where well, you've hid the money, nobody knew you had the money and nobody knows how to find the money. And then guess what? When you die, the banks, especially if that's where they're hiding the money, end up keeping the money and sending it back to the government. Mm. The bank, the media, and the government, they all work together to take your money because the, the whole American system is all about control. Whoever controls the money controls everything, which is why America is very slick. They understand the system, which is why they allow a lot of immigrants to come. And so many immigrants come here. Some of us, some people die to get to America that never made you know, they come here because of the so-called freedom that we have. And it's true. We do. You know, but if you don't take the time to learn the rules of the country that you're in, yeah, you just be everything and just work, work, work and retire broke or retire. You could have a lot of money or you die and the government takes it. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so one thing I found out quickly was. The first research I did, I said, when was taxes introduced to America? Because mm -hmm. if, if I'm going to pay taxes, I need to know what was the history of it. Well, taxes was introduced in 1913. And it was supposed to be temporary. That means it was 7%. The highest tax bracket in 1913 was 7%. Mm -hmm. So if you made a million dollars, you're paying 7% interest. I mean, um, percentage. Then three years later, the government said, wait a minute, people are dying and we're not getting any tax money from them. Mm -hmm. They introduced what they call estate tax. So one thing I teach, you know, families that are in my mentorship group, because I have all sets of people, family, business owners, you know, clients, and then I have people that let, allow me to mentor them for the whole year. You know, and I help them as before they make any financial decision, they call me. Before they buy a business, they call me and we look at different structures, help them make it work. But what we what I tell every family, like you, for example, you know, and it was you, you know, single, you are a business. Right now, you're the president and the vice president of your family business. So now, if you're going to bring somebody into your family business, you're not looking for a secretary. You're not looking for a bricklayer. You're looking for a president that can come in and take that position off of your hand, mm -hmm. right? So you don't want anything lower from what you're doing already. Mm -hmm. But that president that you're going to bring in, got to do what? Has to be someone that is responsible can handle finance, can handle things that you don't have time to do. You know, that you like, okay, now this is your job. You're delegating. And then when you have children, the children are the employees of the family business. Everyone has a role to play. So when I work with my single clients, I always educate them, you know, everything you do, you got to think smart about it. Because at the end of the day, the federal government, no matter how anybody slice, dice it, the government sees every person and every family as a business. Which is why, think about it, when a divorce happens, what happens? Mm -hmm. Everything is split 50 50. Isn't that what happens if you and I are business partners and we split up? We're splitting everything 50 50. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> So the government knows, okay, they're divorcing 50-50. While they're married, the family brings in income. The family has expenses. So same thing with the business. If I set up an LLC, I have an income. I have expenses, right? Mm -hmm. And me and my business partner, if I have a business partner in an LLC or S Corp or whatever, we know what income is coming in, right? We know what expenses is going out. We pay each other a salary, 
He takes his salary, go do whatever he wants to do. I take my salary, go do whatever I want to do. So why aren't we doing that in the family business? Mm. Mm. Wow. You touch bases on a lot of things that people either don't want to talk about, avoid, or they don't even know where to even start. And thank you so much for highlighting all that you have, because these are not conversations that people really have every day. And that's the problem. Um, debt is not always the issue. It's the lack of knowledge. Biblical terms, this is what the Lord talks about. People do perish because of the lack of knowledge and wisdom goes far beyond information, but information is required for that wisdom to be implicated. So it's amazing that you use what you have learned and what you're learning to give it back to the community in all facets. Children play a role, men play a role, women play a role. So whether you're single, you're in a relationship, you're married, you have a sibling, you have a child, you're the child of someone, everybody, like you said, plays a role. And it's important, especially in today's economy, for us to understand the way our population works, especially for those that are in the U.S., but I'm sure when it comes to those from an international basis, there's some type of government system. There's some type of, you know, control that they know what we need to know first. So when we don't know it at all, you know, even if we have some type of wealth or riches, it's going to evaporate, like you said, perfectly with the example of water, because water is necessary, right? So if you put that in terms of money, money is necessary, not in terms of, you know, being obsessed with it, but understanding it as a tool um, in terms of what it's used from the fi the foundation aspect, the implication aspect, the execution and actionable as aspect. So you touch bases on a lot of areas and it's important because, you know, regardless of your age, even with what you touch bases on with the children, you know, um, a lot of business owners don't always, you know, understand, even if you have a child, teaching a child business at a very young age, you know, when children did, you know, lemonade stands or selling snacks or things like that, that's kind of like a, a another way of kind of like introducing them in the entrepreneurial way. But Every business owner, if they have a child, you know, not even just teaching your child, but like you said, having your child work for you, you know, there's benefits on both sides with that. And they gain the knowledge at a very necessary age where, you know, you don't have to wait till you're 18. You know, by that time, there's a lot of information that you missed out on. So thank you for touching basis on all of that, because it's important for families to know this, especially like you said. Um, also, you hit all great points, but even another point that you mentioned in terms of, you know, those that are in marriages, you know, they may hide money from each other or different things like that. And, you know, a lot of times death can expose things. Um, and, you know, if you have a hidden treasure, if it's hidden, how is anybody going to even know where it is? So it's important to have these realistic and necessary conversations because this is what sucks the wealth out of our generations and our bloodlines, especially when God designed us to be fruitful, multiply, replenish the earth, right? So although there's animals and architecture, we as mankind, um, human beings, we were given the authority to rule and have um dictation over these things so if we don't understand how to use money then you know it's not even that we're not going to just have money but we don't understand really the difference between wealth and riches and that's actually a question I want to ask you <laughs> next because you know a lot of times yeah there's people that can have a lot of money quote unquote but they're not always going to be in the wealth category. So from your perspective and your experience, how would you like to identify the difference between wealth versus riches? Yeah, definitely. So it's interesting. So wealth means you've created something for generations to come, your children's children. And the Bible talks about that, right? Mm -hmm. And 
you know, I, my second book is called Preserving Generational Wealth. So the mm -hmm. first is creating it. Then the second is preserving it. So everywhere people are getting rich today, you could get rich all, I mean, you could open up an Instagram page and all of a sudden blow up by dancing. Now you're rich. But you're just a dancer. You don't have no financial literacy. So what are you going to do? I'm going to go. And you're not talking because most people stay in the same circle of friends, right? And most times you only get the information that your friends have. But where do you, where are your friends getting the information from? Maybe from the media. But the media is controlled by the people that control the media that say, okay, we need to control the mindset of these folks so they don't think outside the box. So they just stay in that box, which is why everybody every financial advisor you talk to, Merrill Lynch, Edward Jones, no matter which one, where do they put your money? Mutual fund stocks. Yes. You know, financial advice, where do they take to put your emergency money? Savings account for six months emergency. But that's where the education ends. The next one is put money in your 401k if you have a job. They tell you that. And the business owner, listen to the same people that just gives somebody that is making $50,000 an advice. Now you are 250, you are 300, you're a million. You're still listening to a person that is educating the $50,000 um, uh, worker, your core. And then they tell you to put money in the same account in a 401k, which again, there's nothing wrong with it, but every level of wealth requires a different type of mindset and a bigger box. See, one thing I always say is this, you know, I, I call it the, the box of knowledge. Mm. See, we all have this box of knowledge. And once in a while, a different idea is going to come that's outside your box of knowledge. So the only thing, there's only two things you could do. The first thing you could do is say, ah, oh, it sounds too good to be true. I don't know. Let me ask this person. You're asking somebody that doesn't even know. And they tell, oh, yeah, yeah, don't do it then what you do, you stay in your lane, you stay in that box. Me, when a different idea comes that's outside my box of knowledge, guess what I do? I get a bigger box. Mm. I acquire that knowledge, you know, and I have an open mind and I listen just as God has given us the same mind to listen and hear, guess what I do? It also allows us to be able to discern certain things. You know, I don't make, I don't jump to make investments based on emotion, which is what a lot of people do. And they get jacked and they lose money because they made investments based on emotion. You're mm -hmm. not supposed to jump into an investment. You're supposed to be patient, you know, and build up your cash flow first. So most people don't understand the power of saving money. Once you understand the power of saving money on a consistent basis, man, you're going to be so powerful because... All you're doing, because what interest rate are we looking for at the end of the day when we take risk? To invest in the market, you're taking risk. It's called speculation. You're speculating. You know, most people say, oh, compounding interest. No, the market, the stock market, mutual funds, they're not, they're not compounding interest. They're speculative because you don't know what interest rate is going to be. The market goes up, the market comes down, the market goes up, and they tell you, oh, for the last 10 years, the market is average 8%, 12%. They make up all these stupid numbers. Average is not money. It's just smart. Mm. Because it's capturing all the negatives too. And then it tells you, so the how is that making, it never made sense to me. Because again, as I've been blessed to come from a culture that thinks, you know, outside the box culture. And of course, you know, it's just, I guess, you know, we, our mind, when we get into a business and we start understand, we start asking a lot of questions so we understand. And that's what I did in my, you know, getting into this financial industry. The first thing first that I realized, they told me I could make a lot of money in it. And I noticed all the people making money in the business. I'm like, hmm, this sounds good. I could do that. If that guy can do it, I can do it too. Mm -hmm. So I just jumped right in and I focused and I started doing it. And now, you know, it's been, you know, worth it for me. You know, it's, I've been blessed with the business and I have multiple other companies. By the end of the day, 
um, I just give back by educating people, teaching them the power of understanding. And I'm never scared to spend money to get knowledge. Unfortunately, so many people want to get information for free or don't want to pay for knowledge and they stay in their position. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, that was amazing. You touched bases on so many areas and it's important to understand powerful, powerful point you made. All of the points you made today are powerful. Let me say that as well. But the power of understanding, understanding, so much is so understood, misunderstood, excuse me, but understanding knowledge um, outside of information, outside of speculation, outside of people just talking, but the wisdom in the discernment aspect, but the knowledge and the understanding. The Lord talks about this, of course, from Genesis to Revelations, but, you know, the book of Proverbs, you know, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I believe it's uh, one one scripture that I love many, but um, the Lord gives us wisdom and um, out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. You know, us as humans, we have so much in our head. Um, we listen to so many fictitious things and we just, there's no discernment on able to discern, not even just good from evil, but facts versus just false, right? Myths. And it's so important, as you said, to be able to invest in your knowledge. As you said before, you know, some people may think you're crazy for spending $4,000 on a book, but some of these people are in the same position, if not worse before, because the lack of investing in the knowledge and then asking the Lord to guide you with the proper understanding to be able to obtain and execute what needs to be done. Because also faith without works is dead. We can want what we want, but it means nothing if we're not implicating the understanding first and then um, the execution once it's resonated in your system, like, okay, this is what it means. So that is amazing that you use, you know, all of the gifts that God has given you, the vision, the wisdom, the knowledge and understanding to really educate because education is another form of wisdom. You know, when you're able to educate people, I can pay for things for you, but if I can educate you, that's the wealth right there. And that's something that people have to be able to understand, like, you know, not just education in schools, no offense to schools and universities, but they don't really touch basis on these things that deep. Um, even if you take maybe a business class or a course, you know, nowadays, a lot of people are just finding ways to, whether they say get rich quick scheme or just kind of find a way to like, do the shortcut and things like that, people are investing in the wrong things that put them in debt, that, you know, shorten their lives. Because a lot of times I've, you know, noticed, um, whether it's like personal experience or things that I've noticed, like just in general in the environment, you know, most people have money issues because of their health or most people have health issues because of their money. Like it kind of goes hand in hand. So when you have that lack of knowledge, comprehension and understanding, how are you really going to implicate what's really going to not just fix the problem, but there's resolution, there's a difference. So thank you so much for touching bases on all of these areas, because this is something that, especially now, like you said, a lot of these areas, as of course, entrepreneurs, we're always learning, we're students first. Um, and that's the beautiful thing about education. Um, a lot of this information, like you said, you, said you've learned whether it was years ago you know back in the day as you're still learning now there's things that you know people in your age my age or in between or even older than us they they don't know and the information is not really widely spread like you said the, those wealth secrets and even those that are in the wealth spaces they don't always know these things i'm sure you come across clients that have wealth but they still have areas where it's like oh wow i didn't know that so that's amazing that you use, you know, your businesses, your platforms and areas of, you know, your book, like a, a, a fellow author myself, you know, there's so much um, education and blessings in putting very important 
information and wisdom in books like it's so essential you know there's so many things that people read about that have nothing to do with their developmental process it has nothing to do with that area where there's a deliverance there's a transformation that needs to take place like just kind of like when people go to school it's not really about graduating there's supposed to be a transformation process that takes place from when you first start in that class to the transition of that class alone before you even talk about, you know, the semester and things like that. So, you know, it's important to have these conversations and it's really um, amazing to hear that you don't hesitate to educate, of course, like you said, invest in knowledge because people will buy, you know, <laughs> clothes and just things that there's a necessity, but there's a cap on it. You know, you're not buying it because it's needed. You're really buying it because it's more of like a luxury to you. And then you don't even have the opportunity to really experience luxury in terms of the education and the knowledge and the wisdom behind that. So especially in the financial space, you know, people of color, minorities, even Caucasians, you know, Nigerians, Africans, et cetera, foreigners, we need to make sure we're educating ourselves more and not with fictitious things, with fact, with truth, with proper knowledge. So we understand that finances, when we get the proper education, it actually works for us when we position ourselves um, to gain that understanding and knowledge versus we're working ourselves to death, literally, which a lot of Americans do it all the time, even those that are wealthy, you know, sometimes they really don't know better. So, so thank you so much for just covering all of the information that you had today. Um, it's been just a, a wide spread of amazing knowledge and pivotal points that you covered in regards to life decision making in all aspects especially when you understand and learn the importance of understanding when it comes to finance um what it means how to utilize it how to position yourself whether you're a business owner a single a married a child a parent a person this is really important for all of us so um i have just a final question for you actually two but um my second to last question for you is um, when it comes to finance, what would be your message for men, whether they're single, whether they're married, um, whatever capacity, what is your advice, but your message for men when it comes to the financial space? Yeah, definitely. So, you know, just finishing up and saying, you know, a lot of times we don't understand the power of saving money, right? When you're saving money, you got to always think about the long-term savings goal a lot of times we, we put away money let's say for example if i'm putting away a thousand a month in five years that's sixty thousand dollars now understanding sixty thousand dollars all of a sudden now you're watching tv and the media comes on and say you need to buy the american dream buy a house and what do you do you go take your sixty thousand as a down payment and even put more than they require but now the money is sitting in a house you don't have access to it you can't touch it. If anything happens, the house gets foreclosed, you lose your hard and cash. And then at the same time, you just lost five years of savings. Yes, it's in a house, but how easily can you get it in case of emergency? And two, now you got to save five years again up front. That's, a, that's 10 years gone. And that's why, you know, I talk about opportunity costs. So one thing we always got to remember when, when it comes to saving money, there's four C's you got to always remember, four C's. The first one is compounding interest, uninterrupted compounding interest, meaning when I'm saving the money, I don't want, I want to use the money to do stuff, but I don't want to interrupt the growth of the money. Mm -hmm. So I want to be able to have my money continues to grow, continue growing while I could use it to put on a down payment on a house, but I'm not using my money. I'm going to use OPM, other people's money. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing, the second C is collateral, collateral capacity. So while I'm saving the money and it's earning compound and interest, 
I need to be able to use it as collateral to borrow money. So basically, I'm going to pledge my 60000 and say, listen, I don't want to touch my money. Can I use your money to go do what I need to do? And I get a loan to do it because credit is something that every immigrant needs to understand. Credit. Yeah, you came from a country where there's no credit. You laugh at people that pay, that use credit because you don't understand that OPM is the best way to build wealth, especially if you understand the power of using other people's money. So collateral, I call it collateral capacity. And the third C is cost, opportunity cost. Because every time you spend money, you got to ask yourself a question. What would that money be worth in the future if I invested it? Mm. A lot of times we don't look at the investment part. We spend the money and it's gone. We never have access to it again. What would that money be worth in the future if we had saved it? Then the last C that everyone should know about is control. You always got to be in control of your money because the government want to control your money. The banks want to control your money. The media want to control your money. And all three of them work together to get in your mind. I remember this. It don't matter how smart you are, but if you broke, nobody's listening to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You could have all the degrees in the world, but you ain't got no money. Ain't nobody talking to you. Just that simple. Spot on. <laughs> Very spot on. Um, thank you for sharing that. Um, these are elements that you don't hear much. I mean, there's a lot of people that, um, like yourself, are in the financial space, but you know, outside of secrets that, of course, are not particularly going to be broad, this is not being discussed. Um, there's a lot of misleading information in all industries, but especially when it comes to finance and understanding, especially in the global state that our economy in, is in as, you know, African Americans, but as individuals that, you know, now more than ever, we really need to invest in the proper knowledge the and proper, the proper investments and the four C's that you mentioned. Um, and just definitely understanding how to control your money. A lot of times when people make money, they feel like, oh, okay, there's money coming in. I can spend it as if they, there may not be an option for that drought to take place or that source of income business or employment. There could be a time where that could be removed. So what's your backup plan? What's your plan B, C, Z? You know, I don't think people really think that deep. Um, a lot of times we get so caught up in things, like you said, what the media says, they have a, play, a part that they have to play, what the government says, what, you know, each individual in terms of the cooperation of what they play that most citizens really don't pay attention to. It's really important now more than ever for us to have these conversations and not even just have conversations, but where's the action behind it? Where's the execution? What are we going to do once we obtain this information? Are we going to be able to make sure we have a proper understanding? Are we going to make sure we have a proper implication? Um, these are things that, you know, it's up to each individual, but it's important for us to have these conversations. So thank you so much for touching base on just everything because, um, all of them are extremely important, valuable areas of not just finance, but human development. You know, like if you don't understand finances, if you don't understand the decisions that you make now, especially when emotions are involved and not logic or lack of logic, how much that can set you back mm. um, versus the decisions that with a sound mind, with proper understanding and implication and execution, how that can have you with the favor of God, wisdom, and of course, the work that you put in outside of your faith, how that can even put you ahead of the competitors, you know, or people that they don't even have to be competitors, but put you ahead of the game is super essential. So we appreciate you sharing that. Um, my final question for you today is, 
uh, here on the Lady E Effect, of course, like yourself, we interview a lot of amazing purpose-driven individuals, you know, that share wisdom, knowledge, and understanding when it comes to all aspects of life, personal development, and just overall growth. So one of the main, main areas that we love to talk about on our platform is the word purpose. So my final question to you is, if you can put purpose in a sentence, how would you use it? Hmm. I could put purpose. Now you're, you're asking me. <laughs> that's a, that's what my purpose is, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, for me, you know, it's this. Me looking at like my company called True Legacy and living a legacy. The legacy is not just the money part. It's more so the name. I want to make sure that everything I do, right, when I'm out of here, I want to make sure that when my kids knock on somebody's door or somebody's office or wherever it is and they need help, and the person asks, oh, okay, I see the last name. Who is that? Are you related to so, so, and so? And they say, yeah, that's my dad. And they open that door for them. Mm. See, because most people forget that at the end of the day, we're going to leave this earth. You know, we don't know when it's going to happen. The question is, what are you leaving behind? You mm. know, so when people chase money and do it all kinds of where they hurt people, they steal from people, they do whatever it is. Just, you know, they forget that one day you're going to be gone. Karma will come and get you. So I try to live my life the best way I can you know, stay in my lane. I don't count nobody's money. I count mine. I'm busy counting my money. I don't have time to count yours. So I ain't worried, you know, what you're doing. I'm focused on what I'm doing. And, you know, I've lived by that principle and it's been, it's helped me a lot. You know, I've written five books and for a guy with just a high school diploma from West Africa, no college education, coming to a country like this that's blessed with so much resources and, you know, living an amazing life got beautiful family, you know, what else can I ask for other than just continue to build fast and then impact the world with the knowledge that I have. And for the folks that want to tap into my knowledge, they're free to do it, but it's not free. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> because, you know, you go to school, you spend hundreds and thousands of dollars in student loans, but then you want to come get free knowledge that will help you and make you millions of millions of dollars. I don't, that never made sense to me. You're right about that. And um, that's definitely a great example of purpose. The intention behind the mindset, the actions, the discipline. There's so many different aspects to it. And yes, definitely um, the name. You know, it's not even about being a celebrity or anything like that, but understanding what you leave and what comes with the name is super powerful. That is also another form of wealth, because when you do things from a clean and a pure perspective, a sound minded perspective, there's children, there's children's children, there's generations that are behind you that absolutely can be affected by the decisions that we make in this present time. So amen, that is absolutely um, a powerful, powerful statement in terms of purpose. Purpose is not just a word, it's it's a lifestyle. Um, yeah. It has a lot to do with why we were even designed as human beings. So when we take these attributes as seriously as we should, I believe the world would be a different place. Um, so thank you so much for coming on our platform, for just blessing us with the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding that you have been blessed to obtain over the years. Um, we love the fact that you're doing so many things and that's amazing that you are an author of five books. Even to write one is not easy. Even when you do have the knowledge, that's something that, you know, just like a business, it, it's a very important area to remember, like there's patience involved. It's a process, 
but it's very rewarding to get it out to the people. So for anyone that would like to get in touch with you, for anyone that would like to uh, connect with you from a business aspect or anybody that would like to um, purchase or invest in any of your books, if you could share with us how we can reach you and um, how we could be able to purchase your books um, on whatever platforms that you have available, we'd appreciate that. Yes, here's what I'll do for, for your audience, right? I'm going to give away my book for free for them, the, the Creating Generational Wealth. Mm. For free. You know, but they have to be in America because I'm not shipping to Africa or anywhere else. You got to be here, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But you know, if you have relatives in America, get them to get the book. And then when they visit Nigeria or wherever, or whichever country you're in, you can, you, they could give it to you, uh, you know. But yeah, so you can get it for, I'll, I'll give it to them for free. So well, all they have to do is go on my Instagram. You know, I'm Douglas Aze on Instagram. There's a whole lot of them. I'm verified. There's so many, you know, scammers. They have, they copy your name and all that stuff. So make sure you find the right one. You'll see my information on there. And just drop a follow first, follow, like the page. And then of course, you know, send me a message and say, I, 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 I heard your podcast. With edit Umosu, and you said you're gonna give me a free book, and then we'll ship it to you. Now we'll check the shipping. If it's too much, I'm gonna to have to have you pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair but other than that, my website is buildwealthwithdouglas.com. Buildwealthwithdouglas.com, and I'm also hiring. We I have the largest um, independent marketing organization called. Um, True Legacy Life Group, we're an insurance agency, all black owned, female owned, you know, um, and we're just changing because I'm looking for financial folks that are in the insurance field or someone that's looking to get out of their career and do this business. And we'll, you could do it part time because there's so many immigrants, there's so many black people, there's so many Caribbeans that work hard, do everything right but their finances ain't right. And I can't reach everybody. So we're looking for folks to come join us. There's no cost to joining us. We help you with the study so that you could get the test, pass the exam and get into the field. That's all I have, just the life and health license. That's all you need, probably just life. And then you could make a hundred, two, three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000 change your family's zip code, change your family's legacy forever. Cause now you're learning about money the rules to the money game. It's a great business. A lot of people missed it because they don't understand. They see it, but they don't understand how much wealth in that business. You know, ladies go and do, they, they get a real estate license. Everyone do, there's no money in that as an agent. I mean, you could invest in real estate, but being a real estate agent, nothing against, but there's so many fees that you're going to pay, pay, pay. And you ain't sell one house. So here you could sell a penny you could sell a dollar for a penny how many can you buy i mean sell buy basically <laughs> <laughs> well thank you yeah well thank you so much for um sharing that information um we're gonna make sure to have all the links um social media platforms um for anyone that comes across our platform to reach you directly please definitely check out his instagram for sure, follow him. He has amazing, life-changing knowledge. This is literally generational knowledge and wealth in the form of education and many other things. Um, definitely check out his website as well. We will be sure to leave, again, everything in the description box. Um, thank you so much again for coming on our platform and blessing us. This is amazing. Um, if you're up for it, well, we would love to have you for a future episode. Um, Finance is something that, you know, you can't teach in one segment, of course. And of course, nothing is going to be, you know, free all the time either. <laughs> so, you know, we would love to have you come back um, at some point and share additional information that um, is very much necessary for all of us, um, regardless of where you are, but especially us that are in the U.S., like you said, coming from a foreign 
continent and a foreign country and coming to a location where people that are even here don't even know all the resources that are surrounding them is such a powerful thing to do and not even just capitalize off of it, but not leave people behind. Bring people uh, with you in a place where they can be able to ev evolve and expand, um, not just in finance, but most important, in knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and for sure, education. So that is absolutely purpose. That's a blessing. And that is something that generationally no one can take away from you. So I'm sure your children, you know, your wife and those that are part of your community um, are very grateful to be connected with you. And I'm sure are growing in that form of education, knowledge and understanding and wisdom when it comes to finance. So with that being said, thank you again for joining us. Again, my name is Edith, also known as Lady E. Uh, for those that are watching this on YouTube, please be sure to subscribe to us. Um, we have amazing guests like this gentleman here that shares so much wisdom and knowledge and understanding that we need, especially in today's time. For those that are going to be listening to the audio version, we are available on Spotify, Apple, Amazon, the list goes on, and we'll have all that information in the description box. But until next time, we'll see you later. Bye. <laughs>